this is Colleen Clinkenbeard. Thank you for listening to 3 AM Thoughts. Falcon Punch! That's right, you heard it here, folks. So that was the actual dove voice actress for uh, for Luffy, Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece. So uh yeah, so man, like let me let me tell you again, that clip was like it, it, it was a thrill. It was a thrill, and it wasn't the only freaking uh, voice actor I got to do uh, do an intro for me. But anyways, yeah. So, and hey guys, what's up? This is your boy Asiago on 3M Thoughts. How's it going, man? Whew. Yeah, let me let me tell you. You know, things are going pretty good. Things are going pretty well. You know, hey, life life is going good. Hey, you know, sometimes you know work can kind of be a drag, and but you know what? You know, I don't. I, I just try to not let that kind of stuff get to you know. And yeah, sometimes I feel like you feel like you know I want to go on a freaking rage, but then you know I gotta realize that you know in retrospect, my life is pretty damn good. You know, and everything in it. I love absolutely everything in it, and I wouldn't trade it in for anything in the world, man. Let, let me tell you, you know, because. Uh, because like you know, what? Because like, well, the, the, well, okay, let's let's kind of start let's start a, let's start a little bit over here. So, <laughs> so the reason why I chose to kind of use the uh, uh, what you call it, the One Piece voice actress uh, for this podcast was, was because it, it kind of ties into the topic. Now I'm not talking about the actual anime. I mean, I may I may make some references here and there, but like it's it's uh, it's more of like the topic of the anime itself. Which, uh, so like the whole topic, like I'm I'm not even like. I, like I'm not even caught up in the entire anime yet. Uh, One Piece. Uh, I mean, I, I'm like I'm I'm in like still in the early 200s. Uh, that show is like all the way in the 1000s. So yeah, so I still got quite a way to go. But uh, but I, I'm realizing that throughout the throughout the many arcs, throughout the like stories, throughout the character developments and all that, that one of the biggest uh, like well, like one of the biggest driving plot uh, plot lines they uh, they they keep. Oh, oh okay. I thought that was gonna be a burp. But anyways, yeah. Uh, so I see like the most recurring theme that they have in the show is uh, you know the importance of uh, friendship and stuff like that and that's kind of and that's kind of what I'm going going into here today uh, it's a podcast I've been wanting to make for a while uh, but the thing is, is that you know with work and work is work can be very unpredictable man like a lot of times I have no idea if I'm gonna be leaving at 8, 8 a.m 9 a.m 10 a.m hell even damn near noon uh, I, I don't even know and then even does regardless of when I get out sometimes I'm just way too tired I just kind of want to sit home yeah sit at home watch some videos or I gotta do some errands or I gotta freaking uh, you know do this or that or sometimes I just want to catch up on whatever animes I'm watching about myself or you know or play or play some games I just got a ps5 recently so you know I want to make some time for that too you know and, and, and then uh and then other things like uh the, again this whole uh, anime convention like uh watch well, i didn't mention it in this podcast but yeah i went to an anime convention recently and uh so i could i took a couple i, I took a couple days off for that uh well really what i did was i took uh, i took you know I, I took two days off because the whole thing started on uh it started on a, on a on a saturday but i decided to take uh yeah, and I started, and I decided to take a Friday off as well, because with my, because with the way my schedule is, I'm off Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. But you know, this, con- but this uh, convention took place on Saturday and Sunday. I work Saturday, so I had to take that off. But because I also needed to make sure I can actually readjust my sleep schedule. Uh, you know, I also took the, the took the Friday off. So I mean, all together was freaking five days off all together. Actually, as of, as of right now, as, of, as I'm recording this, yeah, like this is like the fifth day, man. Like let me tell you, this mini vacation does wonders. It does wonders. Let me tell you, let me tell you, people out there, if you can, if you have PTO and you can take some time off, please do so. It's good. Yeah, it's it's, it's just good. It's just good for your mental state. It's just good to relax. It's just it's just fine all around, man. Hell. Just not having to really worry about what's going on in the workplace for a good while, and just kind of go chill, do the stuff you love, go spend time with your family, spend time with the ones you love, and all that kind of stuff. And believe me, that's that's definitely what I've been doing this, uh, you know, these past uh, few days. Because actually, well, Friday technically not, because the way I had to readjust my sleep schedule, I both stood up really, really freaking late, and also slept for like 12 hours. So yeah, so I like so I almost pulled like a 24 hour that day. Actually, no. Uh. Let's see, yeah, because on on, uh, on freaking on freaking Friday, yeah, so freaking Friday, I had that night off, so I got off that morning, so I got off around like I think it was nine nine something, and uh, no no yeah yeah yeah, it was nine ten a.m. you know somewhere around there, and I uh, and I stood up all the way to I think it was like five or six, you know I, I stood up for quite a while quite quite a while after work, 
uh, like normally on a work day, I, st I like I stay up no later than two, and on a, uh, see on a, on a day off, you know I I, I, I well I tend well because of the, because of the fact that I wake up earlier on my off days, I tend to uh, wake up. Uh, I mean I tend to go to bed no later than like eight o'clock or some or eight ten you know something around there. But anyways, that no, see that's not too relevant. Uh, so yeah, man. Like so again, I I stood up like super late. Uh, well, at least, at least for me, anyways. I stood up super late, uh, you know, on Friday. But then also, I I slept for like ten hours. Uh, my body actually naturally woke up at like the eight hour mark, and I'm like, no. First of all, we're used to getting six hours of sleep. Second of all, like I'm legit trying to get ten hours of sleep so I can actually be able to stay up longer, you know. So like for those last two hours, man, I had to push my body, saying, okay, you know, just keep pushing it. We we have oh, no way to get it was ten hours and. I woke up. I kept. I woke up at the 10-hour mark, and I had to force myself to sleep. To force myself to sleep, you know, for the 12-hour mark, man. Cause I woke up at four. You know, I was like, actually, no, yeah. Uh, I woke, I'm actually. Did I sleep for 12 hours? Oh no, I slept for 10 hours. But uh, originally, I wanted to sleep for 12 hours. But I mean, I, I just kind of stood up doing other things. But shoot, man, let me tell you. Stay. Yeah, like staying up really late and then sleeping you know staying up for a long time and then sleeping for a long time it does balance out in like the weirdest way possible and because of that i was able to wake up like wake up uh, like really early in the morning while it was still dark outside took a buddy of mine all the way to huntsville drove all the way back that was an entire three-hour trip and then we all yeah and then i just uh like in saying this you know like it wasn't even friday it wasn't even friday like again most of my friday actually let me tell you about my friday so like literally after work i noticed uh you know my truck needed to get needed to get fixed up so uh you know the brakes they they weren't the best you know and the steering wheel and the like, steering wheel i noticed how i had, had to keep it had to keep it crooked in order to go straight so i'm like okay and so i gotta get the i gotta get the brakes check i got the uh, i gotta get the alignment alignment check so i went all the way to freaking uh brake check you know got you know i took care of that you know even before even before going to brake check i took care of some other errands first because it was just on the way to brake check you know i got my dog some food uh you know i went to uh, i went to a couple stores to get some supplies i even went to a bookstore and bought myself some manga but uh but anyways yeah so i went all the way there to a uh, brake check you know i got that fixed up uh but because like it took a, it, it was a two and a half hour job for them uh you know i decided to walk around the uh, walk around walk around the area you know because i was like you know what else, what else am i gonna do sit in the freaking waiting room and plus you know, i was getting hungry you know so i'm like you know i want to get something to eat so i started walking around you know i vis visited some places i never really thought to even go inside of because of the fact that i'm always driving by them i had no real reason or no real notice to go inside them like this little liquidation store let me tell you as someone who works for walmart walmart's already a discount store but there's a discount store for a discount store because let me tell you like the store was simply called liquidation you know i walk in and i see nothing but walmart boxes everywhere the freaking brake packs the freaking uh, and uh, like all the freaking uh, markings on the box you can like uh like the yeah all the marked uh cases and all that you can tell department like department eight department three and all that i'm like okay yeah these are all walmart boxes what the heck like this is just like a discount discount walmart you know like yeah you like literally have to use the word discount two times for that but because like I mean they, they I mean obviously what this store does you know it's liquidation freaking they just bought a whole bunch of overstock from Walmart and they're just reselling it for a super cheap price like you know I didn't expect too much from there but man like oh I was like this is, I mean this kind of blows my mind because I didn't th I didn't think places like this existed I just I just automatically assumed that Walmart just put everything on clearance to to, to Kingdom Come but anyways after, after visiting that place uh finally visited this place called aaron's yeah so it's a it's, it's a it's a furniture slash electronics uh rental place where you can rent to own which i found out then why people don't really go to that place because like i, I saw that they had a, a xbox uh, one x you know it's not the series x is the one x you know and I, again i don't actually you know, go ahead let me go ahead and look it up now okay so uh oh damn uh, yeah so i gotta keep on talking while i look at this uh actually no why am i going on google for man i could just go on uh go on to amazon here let's see xbox series x no 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 yeah i see okay so here's another freaking issue i have i'm gonna go off another tangent before i go back into the other tangent to go back to the main topic but anyways yeah so the whole my whole thing with xbox man look i love xbox i love microsoft and all but dude let me tell you this 
uh, freaking Xbox is they, they suck at naming their consoles like let, like okay so Xbox that was cool that was that was hip that was a brand new name Xbox 360 okay you know you're putting a little twist on there I'm like quite literally it's so much of a twist that's going all the way 360 okay yeah that, that's that's pretty damn cool you know I, I like I kind of like how they did that Xbox one like really I mean I know why they call it the one you know it's it's not supposed to be the first Xbox like they're retconning the other ones no it's supposed to be like the all-in-one console you know this is where you can stream stream all your Netflix this is where you can play your blu-rays this is where you can play your games you know it's supposed to be the all-in-one but you guys could have called it the Xbox all-in-one or the freaking Superstation or I don't know some kind of name to differentiate it from it but you know really it was only for like the first year where people kept on saying Xbox one oh you mean the original one no no I mean the one for 2013 you know like it was I don't know like I mean I was in high school at the time so a lot of people kept on saying uh, people kept on having confusion back you know in the hallways when they would talk when they would talk about the system but uh but man let me tell you man when we had like when the latest Xbox model was the Xbox One X and with the latest model with the latest model of the new console being the Xbox Series X yeah you know they, they like a lot of times i catch myself saying oh yeah you know i'm gonna get this game for the xbox one x and they're like uh, they're like oh you mean the series x i'm like nah, i'm like hot damn it you know freaking the, again like you know you guys could have called it freaking like you know the xbox scarlet you know i mean that was the project name at least or you guys kind of call it like the xbox phoenix or something like that i don't know some other kind of weird name to kind of differentiate your consoles better i mean yeah like I mean, yeah, they said series and not 1X, but I mean, it's literally just a one word difference. Like, that isn't gonna really do very much, especially if, you know, if I'm a grandparent and I'm a, so much of a boomer that I am I am not caught up with video games or whatever, and I, you know, I am trying to buy something for my grandkid, and I'm like, oh, which one? Oh, Xbox, 1X, Series X, oh, they're, they're the same thing, you know, they're, they're an Xbox, you know? But, uh, but anyways, you know, it just, uh, well, let me get off that tangent now, but. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was at Aaron's, and so again, this is so this is why where I found out why nobody shops at this place. You know, so I'm looking up uh, prices for an Xbox uh, One X, not the Series X, the One X. You know, still like the last like last gen model. Uh, so I mean, prices are kind of ranging, but they're staying somewhere around the five hundred dollar mark. And I'm like, okay, you know, five hundred dollars. Okay, then I'll, I mean, it's considering how powerful the console is, but also at the same time, with a new console being, I mean, it's it's available, not too easily available, but like, but surely a lot more easier than a PS5. That's for sure. But I mean, <laughs> but freaking. Uh, like it's it's it, like the fact is like the fact of the matter is that GameStop actually has that damn console in stock, unlike the PS5. And you know, you can, and if you become a pro member, you can actually buy it. I mean, all 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 be it within a bundle. But anyways, you know that's not the issue here. Like, so the problem is, is that yeah. So typically, your Xbox One X is will come to around you know four hundred, five hundred dollars. Okay, you know, not 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 too shabby. But then you go to Aaron's, yeah, you know, and the price tag there says yeah, like one eighty two. But, but here's the twist though 182 for 18 months you know you pay yeah you, know, you pay that off and it's yours or you can rent you can simply rent it for 182 now if you're just simply renting it okay like maybe if you're having a party and you're not typically a person that wants to you know own the con or buy the console you're not typically someone uh who's wanting to really keep it you know maybe you're just keeping it for a party or for, or for a convention or something like that okay you know i, I can understand it 182, 182 a month okay you know so basically like if you're having like a like a two three day even just a week-long convention and you're just using it for like a game tournament okay yeah it will just 182 you know for the whole month and you don't even have to return it until the next month okay i can kind of see that but then again i heard that like i saw they do contracts so it looks like you have to do it for a certain amount of time but i don't know anyways yeah like freaking 182 a month imagine you're imagine going to the store and paying 182 a month for 18 months to, uh, to be able to own this damn thing like 182 times freaking 18 brother you could you would be able to buy a, a, a couple of xboxes of course uh, maybe three or four of them uh, maybe i mean i'm not too lazy to do the math right now but the fact of the matter is is that you can you can buy you can buy more than one with that kind of money and i'm like dude really and it's like with everything else or at least all the other electronics that i saw over there uh computers the, the few uh gaming systems they had there uh the furniture man i'm pretty sure the furniture is about the 
same same gig but yeah like dude i can see why nobody ever goes to this place you know like not once have i ever seen a customer inside there and that was this was like really my first time inside an errands i've never actually like i've always driven by walked by an errands and like dude literally i can see why nobody goes to the store but I me mean, after after just walking out of there kind of all awkward because i was like yeah yeah i'm just looking around i'm like okay yeah this is ridiculous i'm walking out and then they just they were just all like looking at me and i'm like yeah sorry i'm not signing up for anything you know so you know so i just kind of ran out of there uh I, vis- I finally got to visit the flea market uh, for the first time in like nearly a decade. That was that was fun. Got some, uh, also got some like genuine tacos from a taco stand. Oh, let me tell you the poo I had later on the next day from that. Oh man, it was it was it was burning it was burning all right and it was quite a battle but you know what the, those uh those tacos though those tri- those egg and chorizo tacos they were freaking worth it oh my god yeah they were so good rainbow all with the green sauce on it oh it was so great but anyways yeah let's uh but yeah but that's uh that's another oh, that's a whole another thing for another day yeah, again so i was just circling around the block finally got i finally got my truck fixed up you know and i went i went on with the rest of my day i went on all the way back home but then i realized oh yeah this tire it's got a nail in it gotta go for gotta, yeah i gotta go get that fixed up so i got that fixed up then i went home then i went to bed then I proceeded to sleep for a long time, and then I pick up my friend, go to Huntsville, come back over here to freaking Pasadena, and then, uh, you know, just kind of, yeah, I gather everybody up, and we all went to the convention, and the convention was freaking lit, man, let me tell you, like, so this was the smallest convention I ever went to, but brother, let me tell you, this convention, like, uh, like, uh, I mean, it definitely had a really fair amount of, uh, uh, like little shops and stuff the the you know just to spend your money on I got, I got myself a whole lot of rem figures i got i got myself a couple of new posters not too many because i mean i mean i hadn't sent i hadn't sent any pictures of my room lately actually like in the video portion i probably might actually uh uh, what, what, what's the timestamp of this? 1617? Okay, yeah, that's easy to remember. Yeah, so right in the video, and on the YouTube version of this, I'm, I'll actually enter a video just kind of look at, like, just kind of showing off my walls and all that. As you can see, yeah, there's a whole bunch of just like anime posters everywhere. You know, I, I hardly have room for anything else. You know, actually, I had one little empty spot left, and that literally got taken up by some that I bought that day or from that convention. But, anyways yeah i still got a lot of room on the ceiling though that's for sure but anyways yeah moving on from that uh yeah so there's there was plenty of stuff to buy uh it, 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 and, and uh you know i had fun doing that also got some new peekers from my from my truck uh yeah yeah i got some new peekers from my truck again and the video on the on the youtube version of this podcast i will actually be showing you these these things you know uh you know via actual video or audio or whatever but anyways yeah so i mean i, I got i got a ton of new merch you know i spent i spent pretty much like around around a grand for that for, you know, for at, at that convention and uh but part of those grands was because i paid uh you know i paid altogether 120 dollars for these two uh voice actors these dub voice actors that do it to, yeah to make those uh, in, uh what you call it, intros for me you already, you already heard one of them uh yeah you know you got uh, monkey d luffy's uh voice actress and i also and the uh, next uh voice actor uh will be featured in the next uh you know intro for the podcast oh uh, yeah the, the intro for the next podcast there we go yeah anyways but yeah there was a whole bunch of uh voice actors there like and I, and I recognized most of them and I knew their voices man I finally got to meet Chris Sabat man the voice of Zoro the voice of freaking All Might uh, Captain Yummy from Black Clover man like that dude like he, and he had he always had the longest line but he, he, he yeah and I can see why I mean you know I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person that sees him as, as like my favorite uh, like uh, dub voice actor which man like he was really cool and I finally got to meet him yeah like you know he yeah, he signed you know he gave me his autograph you know put yeah, like, put, gave me a little quote uh, we even took a selfie and all that together it was cool it was really cool man yeah uh and again the youtube version of this i'm gonna be sending a photo of that so yeah there you go <laughs> but anyways yeah i mean the, the guy was chill the guy was cool he was great yeah like i just loved his performance he, yeah it was it was cool it was like i don't know i finally yeah i, it, I just felt so excited every time i walk up to these uh, voice actors now that yeah there are a couple of others that i uh, got to got to meet up with didn't actually ask for anything like i didn't ask for an autograph or a selfie and all that so i did so it was free to go see him so i just and uh, I, me and my me and my buddies we got to talk talk with them for a few minutes you know or not for a few minutes for a few like i'm like a minute but still yeah because i mean their lines are still look kind of packed but man yeah like i mean shoot like it was it was a proud day to be a to be a dub anime watch 
last year, man. It was, oh man, so so many great, uh, yeah, so many great actors, man. So so cool, so cool. Now, like that was really like the bulk of the show. That's really where all the budget of the convention went to. But man, let me tell you, it was worth it. Like freaking, it was worth the sixty dollars to get, uh, you know, one recording and sixty dollars to get the other. But uh, anyways, you know, I was, I was, that was that was just fun as hell. Uh, okay, so now. Let's go back on to the original topic. 20, yeah, like almost 20 minutes in. Yeah, so and we're, we're already getting back on track. So the whole, uh, so again, the reason why I wanted to start off with the, with the One Piece uh, intro was because, again, you know, it kind of just relates to what I'm seeing in the show as I'm watching it with uh, with one of my, uh, with, yeah, with a friend of mine. You know, like I, I'm off three days a week, you know, normally. <laughs> I'm, I'm off three days a week, you know, so. And, uh, and every day, you know, and every, every, see, every single one of my off days, you know, I'm always out with my friends. And at least on Sundays, you know, it's just me and him, uh, you know, so I, I come up, I come up over there at night, you know, we just, we spend the whole night watching, uh, watching One Piece and, and, uh, Black Clover, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. I like, I'm showing him one thing, he's showing me the other, you know, it's, it's cool, you know, it's, 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 it's a really cool experience. And watching One Piece, like, again, that, that's the ultimate theme I'm seeing with the show is, the, is like the importance of a uh, of friendship, you know, of, of having that kind of strong kind of bond with each other, of having that kind of trust and all that. And it's uh, and it's, it's really touching when I really think about it and I really think, you know, when you, uh, when you consider, like, all that they that they go through. I mean, I can't. I'm like, I'm at, you know, I'm, I'm at the early 200s. Like, I'm at what you would call Water Seven. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that's uh, yeah, it's getting pretty good. And yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, what you call. I'm trying to put my words together here. It's it's uh, it's an experience for sure. I mean, when you really start start thinking thinking about it that way, you start looking looking things uh, through that lens. Like I, I like I tell you, I so I wholeheartedly believe that when they actually do get to the part where they find the one piece it's not gonna be treasure or anything like that it's gonna be like a literal note from goldie roger or something like that saying the journey you know was uh, was the treasure the friends you made along the way were your treasure and i can i can definitely see that you know and so related to what's go what, what's going on in my life is that yeah for me you know that for sure like for real of all like uh, there, i mean there are many things that i love and uh, like in, the, in this life of mine in this world that i live in and stuff like that but let me tell you amongst my greatest treasures are for sure my loved ones and th- those that includes my circle of friends that i hang out with every single week now again yeah we don't always agree on everything you know still like a lot of time like a lot of times you know we get we get kind of yeah kind of crazy and wild both the good and the bad ways but i mean either way you know it's it, again it's really fun hanging out with them all the time you know every week and just kind of just talking with other people my age like i'm like i'm 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 in my early 20s you know early to mid 20s and i'm talking with all these people and they don't really have that kind of luxury to do to do that all the time i'm mainly because you know school and work and all that kind of stuff but even then like all of us we all got yeah we all got jobs and we all in uh in the sense quite a couple of us have school going on but still like we still make the time you know two to three days a week to just come together and just you know spend an entire entire days hanging out like i mean i'm talking about like starting from like the afternoon going all the way to like freaking three in the morning you know like that kind of like that, those kind of hangouts like you're hanging out deep deep into like the late night you know it's yeah it's uh, it's, it's like it, it's really great it's really great because it's a it's a treasure i mean i see it as a treasure because it's something that not uh, not everyone can have you know it's not something that everyone can do and it's, i find it as a real blessing that I find that I actually have this you know i have this strong relationship between all of us and we've been keeping this whole shawl hangout thing truly steady and going for the past like like what three years you know and uh you know we yeah and we were always just uh you know we're always spending time together it's yeah, and again, and again it's, enti- it's it's entire day hangouts. Yeah, and, I, and I, honestly, man, like I mean, sometimes every now and again, yeah, like one of us won't show up because we just need a day to ourselves for whatever reasons. And I and I completely get that. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll do that myself. Like uh, like uh, there was this one day where I was just I I really needed a day just by myself. And it, yeah, it was it was kind of therapeutic. But yeah, yeah, I definitely needed it. But I mean, it's like, but even on that one day where I just need to be alone like freaking even as an introvert i'm like i need to be around them you know like i truly like i can't just like i i start going crazy being by myself even if i'm like watching watching anime or if I, even if i'm like playing games or whatever and if i'm even even if i'm reading you know my word and all that it's still like i i even if i'm keeping myself occupied like it, like i like i just desire to be around these people 
you know, and it's, and, and it's, uh, and I, and it's not just because of the fact that, you know, like, that we're pretty much a family at this point, no, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something more than that, you know, so, uh, I might talk about it here and there on, on, uh, on other podcasts, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, no, no, most, most notably the, uh, you know, the whole, uh, the one I made about my grandma, and then the one about, uh, no kids, and, uh, I, I, in, my, in my, I think second or third podcast. You know, again, I might mention this here and there for my other my other podcasts. Uh, so, yeah. So for the yeah, so like uh, for the past like, uh, uh, let's see, I, like up to last year, uh, from like twenty like. Bef- uh, let's see. Let, let me think about the years real quick. Yeah, so like around 2018, going or like 2018-ish, kind of going on. No, 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 no. Let me rethink about this, man, because I'm, I'm trying to piece together the story. I'm just trying to, like, I again, the, the, when I make these podcasts, for the most part, they are they are improvised. I don't really make a script or anything because I just don't like writing. The character casts, for sure, are script, are script most of the time, and I imp- kind of improvise off of that. So I actually, you know, the, it's kind of like a guideline, but no. No, like whenever I make these regular podcasts, now like everything is improvised, and I do not write a, write anything down. Uh, but anyways, okay, yeah, so here we go. So I, so after I broke up with my with my ex, you know, I completely decided that you know I didn't really need anybody. So because really truly the core reason why I wanted to really break up with her is because I realized that this is not a person, this is not the person who I want to be spending time with. I mean, like, literally, and this was a time where, again, I had three days off, but I had every other day off, and I had two of my days off, you know, I spent, I spent on my friends, you know, again, doing the same thing as I'm doing now, except on two, two separate days, and I will give one entire day to her, but... But, but I mean, it, there's a lot of factors and there's a lot of factors but i just didn't i i, I dreaded that day because freaking like again uh, you would think because she because this chick was my girlfriend you know i should i should want to spend a lot of time with her i should i should spend more i should want to spend more than a day with her but the thing is is that i, I again I, like i said many factors uh seen as you know per, like our, our personalities are just really really different you know I would just be like immensely bored at her house, and like again, she also want only wanted to talk about drama and stuff, and I just wanted to have fun. I want to go out and do things, but she wouldn't want to. And then, and, and then, like, and then, like, uh, there would be points where she would ask, "Why don't Why don't we ever do anything?" I'm like, "Cause you don't want to do anything." And she get mad at me. You know, again, there was a lot of conflicts going on between uh just between our both both of our personalities and mindsets and all kind all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I just don't enjoy being around this person. And it just it started becoming a little more and more apparent, you know, as people would realize that I, they, would, they would see it in my face. Like, I would be annoyed when she'd nag at me, like, in public and all that. I'm like, dude, like, I, I can't deal with this chick. Like, I mean, I just want to deal with my friends, you know. So, again, I came up with this entirely really long scheme. Uh, and it took me multiple months, but I finally got I finally got my chance to be able to actually break up with her. Uh, again, it just truly went to the fact that I knew this whole relationship wasn't for me, and uh, yeah, and, and again, this and this, and this chick kind of really made me. Uh, she like I, I, again, it, it, I, again, it was just a bad experience, but she really like ruined my entire view of that. Like hell, I don't even, like I don't like the even idea of kissing us. It's, it's not like. It, 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 it's just it just doesn't even to this day like i'm still like i'm getting better at it it's just not it's just not feeling me the same you know like it's not it's not i mean i don't get as hyped up or excited about it or i don't it's not something that i look forward to you know she kind of just ruined my entire perspective on that and, it, and like and after we broke up i just felt this sense of freedom and i'm like yeah you know i don't want to go through that again you know i i like i don't i, I obviously and at the time i was like yeah why would i ever need to go through this again like no this is something i can just completely live without uh but uh, like and again but that mindset of just wanting to be a hermit like i'm not it's not entirely a hermit i mean i still intended on uh, uh, hanging out with my friends and all that kind of stuff and uh, and uh yeah but then like you know reality is start to kick in every now and then and i'll really start thinking about it and uh quite recently i as, as like maybe like a couple like like a like, uh, two three four months ago somewhere around there i uh, like i started like uh yeah this is what this is after my schedule change you know yeah this is after the whole overnight thing and i'm working five days a week going out being off uh, mondays and tuesdays freaking and this is before i got promoted and got three days off but uh so 
yeah so like every two yeah every uh, Wednesday morning you know after I after I left my buddy's house you know uh, to go you know to get ready to go back to work for the week before I can go see them uh, freaking mo- yeah uh, uh, on Monday and let me tell you I started ha- getting these really heavy emotional feelings like you know I'm, ha- I'm gonna have to wait an entire work week just to see them and even when I got that extra day off when I got promoted I still felt that heavy heavy feeling like and uh, even to this day, like, I mean, it's not as heavy now, especially after I realized some things and I talked it out with my dad and I talked it out with other people. But yeah, like freaking dude, like I like it would just hit me hard because I'm because I'm starting to realize how much these people really mean to me. And then uh, like on, on a deeper scale, at least. And, uh, and, you know, and then I just think about yeah, I, I, I would and I would think about, you know, my like how my relationship kind of just didn't really work all that well and, I, and i'm thinking here well yeah like i mean i'm not too sad about, I'm, not, I'm not salty or sad or anything about the relationship but i am just like i mean i'm just in, in this kind of emotional state where i just realize how much i just love these people that i hang out with all, you know, all the time and how much i just truly love them you know as again as a family and and again you know sometimes it would, I, I start a lot like most of the time i start crying both kind of it would be bittersweet t- tears you know bittersweet tears you know because i'm just loving the absolute blessing that god has put, put gave me with these people and but too again it's kind of also in sadness because i mean well first of all i'm having to wait an entire work week whether it be five or four days i'm still having to wait an entire work week just to freaking see them again and two uh and too, like again, reality starts to kick in. I like, and I think about someday, like, uh, and, and again, I'm not anticipating for this day to come anytime soon, or and uh, I'm not like, and again, I'm not like actively waiting for this day, like, oh, I want this to happen. No, no, but I know, like, naturally, with life as life goes on, this you know that some the, something like this is either likely going to happen or it's going to happen. Like again, like as of right now, during this time, yeah, like we're you know we're all young, and we can you know we can spend all this time with each other, and it's and it's great you know every week you know for like two to three days you know yeah we can just hang out all the time and we can uh, we can spend time with each other do things uh you know, like do fun things you know just go out with each other even if we're just going out to freaking uh three hours away you know just to freaking go visit some places you know and just fool around and, and, and just come all the way back you know even if we just don't accomplish anything the fact that we're just spending time together and doing different things and all that it's 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 great you know it's something that we all cherish and it's something that i surely cherish as well um but like you know i started thinking about that and i started thinking eventually someday again because you know there's quite a few of them that are in school or that plan to go in school and you know eventually it's going to be a point where you know school's going to be over they're going to be they're going to graduate they're going to go on to their careers you know and then even uh, on top of that you know they all intend on having families someday so uh, again you know as uh, you know as they get careers and families you know and that and they they get involved in all that stuff the whole hangout thing, the whole weekly hangout thing, is not going to be very frequent anymore. And if, in fact, it, it may like we may have to start freaking really truly scheduling, like really planning things like months ahead of time just to be able to have a single day to spend with each other, like we like like, like as we are now, you know. So I started thinking about that, and again, like it started it starts really making me. Well, first, overall thankful of like uh, this the time that I'm living in, but two at the same time, it's. It, it just really makes me, uh, you know, it just really makes me sad that, yeah, like, I mean, okay, I'm, it makes me happy that, yeah, to see my friends, uh, you know, the, yeah, grow, yeah, grow and, you know, and, uh, you know, progress in their life. But at the same time, it might, makes me kind of sad that we're not going to be able to spend as much time with each other all the time. And then here I am, you know, again, like, even not not even fresh fresh uh, from the breakup here. Like, I'm, this is like months ahead. I'm up here thinking, man, do I really want to live alone? Like, it's just, like, I mean, again, like, even, even, like, even now, you know, I'm still not really truly into the idea of kids, but, like, again, like, uh, but even, but even just without a spouse, like, am I, do I, like, I start questioning myself, do I really, really just want to live in a house alone? I mean, I, again, even overall, I don't plan on, I don't intend on living in a big house or anything like that, I just want something small and humble, uh, because mainly because of the fact that I always imagined it was just be me living in it, but I'm like, do I really want to do this? Like this whole, do this whole, like just live by myself, uh, with no one to just come home to. And then the only time I see other people is either at work or when I go visit, visit uh, like family or go to church. And then like it's gonna be super hard to come up with a new, another circle of friends that I can, uh, that I can even 
hang out on a on a weekend basis or something like that you know it's I, 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 again you know i just started thinking about all these factors and then like literally a week after i officially got promoted you know I officially became like uh, like the overnight department manager freaking dude let me tell you man i like so like literally one week af- after i freaking got promoted damn like I, I got real sick i got like i got so sick and i and i think i kind of know why it's because uh so what happened was uh you know i uh i was working in the dairy cooler all freaking night and freaking oh let me tell you i got so much freaking uh like uh boogers and all, all that crud on my freaking uh, on my on my face mask you know and for some reason i didn't i love for some reason i just uh, like i well, i guess because i was just in the zone you know i was just in the zone i didn't i didn't bother to like take off the mask or freaking like or move the mask around or even change masks you know i just decided to keep on working that way because i was in the zone i was trying to get i was trying to get things done you know i was i was just trying to keep on moving but what happened was, was I got to a point to where, well, mostly what I was breathing in was my freaking boogers, and it's, and again, this goes with the same reason why I don't believe in freaking, uh, why, yeah, why I don't believe in sneezing in your mask, is because of the fact that you're just breathing in the same stuff your body's trying to get out, and because I was doing this for an extended period of time, and I'm talking about hours on end, yeah, like, I mean, all that, all, all that, all those germs and all that crap got into my throat, and I'm like, ugh, like, First of all, first of all, I started off with kind of a kind of like a strep throat, you know. So I got really sore, and I I could hardly even talk. But then like I started started affecting my whole like head, my whole body, man. Like like literally that next day, like literally that next day, I was just bedridden. Like I could hardly move. Like I could hardly move to get up. Freaking like my head was hurting. It felt like it felt like freaking like someone was constantly hitting me with a hammer. Freaking. I, like again, like with the whole, th- and there was the whole throat problem. I, like I was getting teary-eyed. <laughs> again, it it was just not good. I was constantly coughing and sneezing. It, it was it was it was not great. It was not fun at all. And this was truly the first time in a very very long time. Like, cause here's the thing. Normally, I don't get sick. You know, and I don't really take vitamins or anything like that. I I just don't get sick. And and and, the, the, and to be truthful with you, like. Like uh, it's just I like I don't even get sick easily. Like a lot of times I'm like, how do I how do I how do I not get sick by doing this? Or how do I not get sick by freaking breathing in this stuff or whatever? But I mean whatever, whatever whatever whatever. Like I just I just don't get sick. And whenever I feel a headache coming on, and whenever I feel my body feeling low, I just uh, normally either I just drink an energy drink or I freaking take a you know take an aspirin or something like that, and I'm fine, you know. But this is the first time I truly truly got sick. Like I'm telling like like I said I was bedridden. And like just like just like a little kid, my mom actually had to come up here and kind of nur- kind of nurse me here to here and there, kind of bring me bring me some medicine, or I just make a check or do a check you know, do a little checkups on me. Again, like I had, it's been a long, long time. Like, I'm, like I wouldn't be surprised if it was like over ten years long since I've been this kind of sick. And actually, at one point, I truly believed that I had COVID. Like it was that bad, you know. I was I was feeling in that much pain. And again, I mean, it was probably wasn't as bad as actually having COVID, but like again, considering the fact that it's been so long since I actually got sick, yeah, it would the experience would feel just ten times worse for me. You know, uh, it would feel ten times worse, even if it wasn't actually ten times worse than it actually was. But anyways, I I, I, was just, I just got so sick, man. Like I, I, it was it was not a fun trip, and and, and then too, I, I and I decided. Uh, cause the, cause there's the weird thing. My sleep schedule for that, yeah, for the freaking like two days I was sick was really just like off the charts, man. Like, the, like uh, the, I would sleep for like, like three hours at a time, stay up for another three hours, and I just kind of kept that pattern going. Or sometimes it would vary, but I mean, overall, like I was waking up, constantly waking up, going to sleep, and I was just trying to wonder, am I gonna, am I gonna have to call out this day? Am I gonna have to call out that day? I called out for one full day. And I was trying to see if I could get myself the healthy enough to work the next day. And I, I, and I did. You know, I got my temperature just at the right point, And I was feeling just right. Still feeling kind of terrible. But just right enough to be able to get on my feet and do, do work, you know? But, dude, let me tell you. Oh man, like so. There, so one of the one of the points where I was one of one of my waking points where I was actually you know just awake and just kind of just playing my phone. I decided to put in Aladdin, you know, like uh, like I, I one of my TVs has a built-in VCR, like it's an old school TV, you know, you know. So it's it's, it's small room size, so I so I put in the VHS tape of Aladdin in there. And let me tell you, 
I well, one of the reasons why I love that movie was because of the whole like relationship aspect. And let me tell you, like uh, even during the times where I was like, nah, man, I don't need anybody in my life. You know, I can stay single all I want. Just watching that one scene uh, where they where they start singing a whole new world, I'm like, damn, this really makes me want to have somebody. You know, somebody I can just you know have by my side, someone I can hug, someone I can kiss, someone I can call. Again, my beloved. You know, some it's like some more deeper than a friend. You know, some who I can call my wife or something like that. You know, and even yeah. And, but in two, I'm being really sick while watching this. I'm I, I my, my like I can't I came to an epiphany. You know, I'm like, no, I I can't I can't live life alone. I can't. Even even God Himself says in the Bible, literally in the very first book of the Bible, like when He was talking about making the very first person, the making the first woman in the Bible, He was saying it's not good for man to be alone. Now I literally took I always took that as kind of like from a biological perspective of saying, well, yeah, it's obviously it's not good for man to be alone because like how are how is he supposed to reproduce, you know? But then later on in life, I started taking it as well. I mean. Yeah, like freaking. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I freaking assume. I, I, I assume that you know God would want a female human. You know, like He made a female everything else. But you know, uh, but then like at this point, I really truly realized why God said, "Man, it's not meant to be alone." You know, and and, and again, even later on, like up to that point, I kind of just believed in that. You know, oh yeah, you know, of course, you know, you gotta have people around you. You know, accountability partners. You know, be uh, be a, be, a, be a part of your church. Be part of communities. You know, have friends. You know, like. Uh, you know, have family or people you can at least call family. I thought it was, I, th- I thought it was meant something like meant something like that. And yes, it does mean stuff like that. I mean, all the all the meanings that I believed in uh, previously, yeah, they're all true. But they're not the but they're not the only reasons though, or uh, they're not the sole reasons. No, it's tr- like truly when he said it's not good for man to be alone, he truly meant that in an actual uh, intimate relational matter. Like, again, kind of like how God wants a relationship with us humans, you know, again, like this guy, I mean, this God who freaking, uh, again, who created this like 13 billion year old universe, you know, like making all these different galaxies and planets, you know, making all like in the concept of time, you know, literally just creating everything in existence, all the supernovas, the black holes, even the possible parallel universes and all that freaking the multiverse it's like this god that created all this stuff who like all like this a massive immense freaking creation that we know as the observable ab- observable gal uh not galaxy observable universe who made every little detail in it from the smallest of atoms to the quantum form to any freaking little big thing that that, that we can say exists this one guy that made all this wants to have a personal relationship with us and likewise again you read it in the bible a relationship between man and wife is supposed to be something like that and again like we we like we are we are relational creatures you know like even by the most biological like secular biological freaking standards we are relational creatures we're communal creatures like it's part of the reason why man has evolved to freaking become become the become and survive the way they had. It's because of the fact that we're we're relational creatures. It's important to have that. Hell, you look at the animal kingdom. They all have mates. Now they may not necessarily be loyal to a to a single mate, but the fact that they need mates and not just for sexual purposes, but for to be able to actually like again like you know, even if it's all instinct, they have just to have partners in order to freaking get stuff done. I, again, like it, it's 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 everywhere. It's around us. And, like relationships are important, and not just the not not just like all the other relationships that we have in our heart. You know, when it comes to friends, family, coworkers, you know, uh, fellow church members. No, it, it, like we're, it also we're also talking about again having that special someone. You know, and I just truly thought of it. I'm like, you know. Yeah, I mean, my mind's always thought of it, and I uh, thought of it, and like in the back of my mind, but I can't. I, I the truth, like, I have to, I have to acknowledge this. You know, I can't let a bad experience with one girl really, like, I, I, I can't let it affect how my whole, my entire look at things. You know, and uh, so I decided, yeah, you know what? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be more open about this. You know, I, I am not gonna. I, I, I am not going to seek to be a hermit anymore. Although I am not going to immediately go out there and start looking for a wife. No, like, got like, 
like as I, like, as I'm doing with everything else in my life, you know, God will lead me to that to that point, to that story arc whenever I'm ready for that story arc, whenever he wants me to get to that story arc, whenever things never things be whenever everything becomes appropriate for the, for the timing of when that, when that's supposed to happen. So, yeah, so I'm not doing anything myself right now. You know, there are a couple times where I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to ask this girl out, but then I, then I start thinking of all my past experiences. I started thinking, well, I, I mean, obviously, one of the biggest things I learned from being in a relationship is that it's not, it, it's it, the con, at least, yeah, the a relationship is not for me right now. You know, I'm spending way too much time with my friends and want, spending too much of my love with my friends to really want to do that, you know, or to really be committed to something like that, you know. So, again, I'm simply not ready. It's so there, therefore, it's not, it's not for me yet. But I know God is eventually going to bring me to that point, you know, to where I finally do meet someone and they become my soulmate, you know. And even if even if I have to go through a couple of someone's to find that, I, or, or maybe or, or maybe God wants me to get out of the first shot. But then again, how, how much character development is in, is in there? But anyways, again, God will take me there when, it, when uh, He will take me there when He takes me there. But for now, you know, again, I'm not like I'm more open about it. You know, I, and and again, I'm not sure when he. You know, I'm not sure when God expects uh, or, or, or or is gonna is gonna pull me to that story arc. Uh, but I have a strong feeling that's not gonna be anytime soon. I mean, saying all all things considered. But I mean, the important thing is is that you know that I I've got shaken out of this mindset. And let me tell you, if, if if me getting sick with the whole entire true like grand scheme reasoning for me for me going getting to that point was because it was just to get me to have that epiphany it definitely worked and i truly do believe that because like literally the next day like again like i was saying before the next day i got well just enough to go back to work after having to call out for one full night i was about to call out for another night but then I, after having that epiphany like literally on that night i was like i'm gonna get ready for work i'm actually feeling just well enough to go back and I'm going to think about this all night. And so I did. As I worked, I kept on thinking about it. Thinking about the importance of it. And and so, yeah. And so because of that, I, I, again, you know, and actually it was from that point too where I started really, really looking into the whole uh, meaning behind One Piece, which is the importance of having these relational bonds, you know, with the, you know, with the ones you love around you, you know? And again, you're not always going to agree with each other on one thing. You know, you're not. You're, it's, again, there's gonna be there's gonna be times where you know it's, everything's not happy go lucky. But that's with every. But I say any and every relationship. You know, you know. But setting differences aside, just knowing what brings you together, and you know, it's truly beautiful. And I believe God brings everything together. But there's uh, there's other factors too that do that same thing. And just thinking about it, it it makes me cry happy tears. You know, I'm so glad for what everything that God has given me. And you know, to be truthful. Again, that's why I'm like really loving this uh, this anime, freaking One Piece, because like it makes me think about that with with uh, with most of every episode. Again, like again, like it's 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 just like with Black Clover, it's an entertaining uh you know it's an entertaining anime, but you can definitely tell that they're trying to tell you something with that with the overall you know theme going on, you know, and that's the overall theme. And seeing how this anime has been going on for 20 years and it's reached over a thousand episodes, yeah, you know, it's it's been telling people that for a good while. And for good reason, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, man. Like, you know, I'm I'm more open about things. Hell, I'm even more open about, you know, okay, so let's say eventually, yeah, like, you know, I finally do meet this person, you know, who I can call my spouse. I finally do meet this person and maybe maybe they want a child. Well, I'm like, okay, like I said before, if I ever wanted to change my mind, if I ever wanted to just kind of be more open about the idea of having kids, I still want to adopt, you know? Like, I don't really believe in bringing more people into this world unless God absolutely tells me that I have to bring this person into this world. Now, I know for sure, uh, like, my, my true purpose of being on this planet is that God told me I'm going to be a spiritual father to somebody, you know? It, yeah, and, yeah, like, really highlight the term spiritual father, you know? Whether it may, whether I may be a spiritual father to like let's say like my either like a future nephew of mine or or to like or to like maybe or maybe like uh to whatever church i go to or even if i'm still going to the same church like maybe i'm poor, maybe i have to like pour out into another younger person's life or maybe uh 
or maybe if it's, or maybe it's a friend of mine that I meet down the road, or maybe it's, or maybe it might be even my own son if he if he's my flesh and blood, blood, or maybe if I do adopt, you know, it might be that that kid who's in the orphanage and I adopt them and I and I start pouring start pouring into them, you know, it's yeah, you know, I I'll, like that's my that's my true destiny. I'm going to be a spiritual father to somebody, and all these experiences that I've been going on going through and going on with all the good, the all the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, every single thing. It's for this person, and again, like I say, before, like I like I said, I don't know if this person exists yet. I don't know if this person or how old this person is. I don't know where they're at. If they are around, I have no idea. Uh, freak, I, I don't know anything about this person. I just I, all I know is that everything I'm going through is for this person, you know. And to be truthful with you, e- like again, even if it has to be my own flesh and blood, even if I have to adopt somebody, again. I'm gonna be more open about things, and I'm, and I know that whoever God leads me to to be my eventual spouse, yeah, like they're gonna realize, yeah, like they're gonna not not only re- help me realize my destiny, but they're gonna also like understand, you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna truly help me out with that, you know, because again, life is not meant to be lived alone, and that's not just, and that is not just a freaking advertisement for freaking uh, life groups at church. No, it's. It's a true fact, you know. You, nobody's meant to do life alone, and you know that's just that's just it. That's the importance of it. You can try to fight it all you want, but the fact of the matter is, is that you, this is something that you can't fight. You know, I mean, how many battles can you truly win alone? I mean, yeah, there's some here and there that you can, but eventually you're gonna find yourself in a pickle where you, you absolutely cannot do this alone. Again, just like in One Piece, like like a lot of times, your Monkey D. Luffy when he was on his own, yeah, he can he, he can de- very well fare for himself. Uh, he, yeah, he can, can defend himself really well. But there are times where he's he's up against a big boss, you know, like Don Krieg or freaking uh, Arlog or freak. Yeah, uh, I hope I said his name like Ar- Arlog or freaking uh. You know, or, or any any of the other big big uh, bad guys that he has to fight. A lot of times, he needs help from his friends. You know, whether whether or not they got special abilities, whether or not they freaking uh, are on the same page as him, they all you know, like they all have to work as a team. And being a manager, you know, at, at a store, yeah, I'm realizing that a lot of times, if you want to get to the main goal, we have to work together as a team. You know, and nobody can't be slacking. I can't even be slacking. Even if I'm giving the orders, I have to freaking go in there and do yeah, do things myself with them to be able to freaking get the job done. You know, we can't, nobody can do something alone. And again, I, this is like a, again, this is like a big theme that's going on in my life right now. And uh, again, it's been many, it's been many months building up and, and it's going to keep on going. It's going to keep on growing into my eventual purpose in life, you know? And, uh, and that's why I'm really loving what's going on with my life right now. So, for as for now, I keep on learning, keep on observing, keep on, you know, keep on reading into my word, you know, continue hanging out with my friends, continue having fun, but just keep every, but I gotta keep everything in mind, that all this is for that whoever this person is. Hell, even me, even the whole fact that I got into anime and started watching all these shows with all these different themes and stuff, they all mean, they all mean something, you know, not, not, and again, it's not just for me to enjoy, but it's for me to find, it's for me to gain these philosophies, to gain, to gain this knowledge, you know, so I can pour into this person, along with the knowledge that we have in the Bible, that we have from experience and all that, you know, and, and again, even, here's, here's a little honorable mention, this is, this is an anime I've been watching by myself lately, it's called, uh, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water, and that's another really big, uh, that's, that's another anime that really touches up on the whole, uh, I mean, it really touches up in a whole plethora of, uh, of different topics, but the overall topics is, you know, love, you know, love, and not in all con- in the, all the different uh, forms of love, just like in Darling and the Franks, like, it's not, it's not just talking about sexual or relational or freaking, uh, or just being around friends or, 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 be, or having a family, no, it's all, con- it's, 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 it, it deals with all the freaking, uh, what you call it, all, all the definitions for, for, for love all the different kinds of love you know and and again just knowing all this and and i just even with my boss man like again a lot of times man with my boss freaking this dude drives me nuts and this dude makes me sometimes want to freaking punch him square in the face but let me tell you man like the big like the biggest thing i know with this guy that i have to do with is not just so much work with him well yeah i have to work with him it's kind of my job but you know but i have to love this person 
and truly if I'm gonna yeah and truly to be able to build up my ability to love others and everyone around me and like in a truest genuine level possible I gotta start with this one guy who uh, who can be really really hard to love like most of the time like mo- like 99% of the time this dude is hard to freaking even like you know even tolerate you know and it's a challenge but it's a challenge I'm willing to take because I know in the end it's going to benefit me and it's also going to benefit this dude. You know, and it's, gonna, it's also going to benefit, you know, whoever whoever uh, is going to be my spiritual child, so, you know, going down in the future. And, you know, and again, like I said, I pray for that guy every day. I pray for my friends. I pray for my family. I pray for everything that's going on. And I pray that I always, you know, stay humble, that I, that I always keep observant and that I never stop learning. I never stop growing and I never stop going. You know, and I pray for everyone, anyone that's listening to this. I like again, this is all my from my experience. But don't, don't, but don't, but don't let it just be my experience. Think about things for yourself. You know, because, because, and, and I was, te- and I was actually talking about this with a co- with uh, with one of my uh, with one of my associates the uh, you know the other night. You know, because because uh, we kind of just got, you know, it was late at night, so naturally, you know, we kind of got into like a deep topic conversation while working, you know, and so like, and so one of, the, and so it kind of just started off with, you know, us talking about the band Ghost, you know, how, you know, yeah, they're they're, you know, they're a, they're a hell of a band, you know, freaking, we like their music, uh, and he was just talking about how like, uh, you know, freaking, he oh, so he can't wear uh, he can't wear the jacket at work because you know, yeah, has an upside down cross, but anybody can wear uh, jackets with you know regular cross on it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, even though I even even though neither of us agree with the upside down cross no i mean it's still it's a freedom of religion so it's still a freedom of speech and i do believe everyone should be free to express themselves any way fit you know and i and going into more into that I, I was telling him yeah you know uh so and it goes and it goes along with my with my favorite song you know uh your own choice by pro call harem uh, so it goes, yeah. So it goes on with that song and just kind of the epiphanies I went through over the years. That uh, you know, truly the thing that my favorite thing about humanity, the thing that I truly believe on the deepest level possible that makes us human, are, are, is our free will and ability to make choices. You know, hell, even even the whole uh, yeah, even the Garden of Eden. You know, with Adam and Eve, like God gave them a choice. You know. Yeah, so like at first they're a sinless, you know, they're completely obedient to God and everything, but you know he still gave, yeah, but he still gave him that choice. You no, know, he, he he didn't give him the choice not to. He didn't give him no choice to not sin at all. Uh, like I'm, well, I'm not sure if I'm wearing that right. Yeah, he's not like he gave him no other choice but to be obedient. I mean, no, nah. Cause, no, no, nah, because then like, because uh, then how, because uh, then like as people who you're as as a, as a creation that you want to love how's that how's that real love you know he wants things to be wanted things to be genuine and stuff like that so he gave us one choice and then only that one choice but even when we screw that up he still loves us still first of all and second of all if that opened up humanity's eyes you know to have to tr- to making important choices you know and again and whether they're good or bad smart or dumb we have to bear the consequences of our actions and and again, it's not even just consequences of our actions. It's just overall how we take things, how we perceive things. You know, the most important thing is just making your own choices. And to be, and to, and to be honest, it's and, and, and all that we do. And as you're listening to this podcast, and maybe and maybe like and maybe you're just listening just to listening to it, just listen to it. You know, but perhaps you know you're just kind of listening to this podcast because you know you 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 saw the thumbnail picture, or you saw that I was talking about One Piece, or the fact that I was talking about Friends. You know, or maybe you just wanted to know about my freaking trip to the the break check. But you know, but the fact of the matter is, is that. Uh, you know, as you make your own choice today, you know, who will you serve? You know, who will you listen to? What, what, like, what, with all your experiences, what are you going to do about it? You know, and that's, and, you know, make you, to the full fact that you got that choice to make and whatever choice you do decide to make, even not making a choice is making a choice. Yeah. If you, like, it's like that song from Rush, you know, freaking free will. Uh, like, I forgot how exactly how it goes because it's been a while since I listened to it. But if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Yeah, so even if you're, yeah, even if you don't, even if you do nothing, you still made a choice, you know? And again, like, and and all that combined with the experiences that we have either from it or with, or along from it, or along with it, or even before it, you know, it just makes us who we are. And to be be honest, you know, if you're just kind of struggling with, you know, 
uh, even with just like your identity, whether you may be, maybe your identity in Christ or whether you're just identity as the person as a whole. You know, it all depends on your choices. So just choose today. You know, what what are you gonna do about it? I'm telling you all this, and you're listening to all this. What are you gonna do about it? Even doing the smallest of something is doing is better than doing nothing, because at least you're getting some kind of a result. You know, and uh, again, that's that's just the important factor. You know, it, it, hell, even on my Facebook, it, I mean, it's written in Japanese, but I mean, you're translated. It's Jesus died for you. What are you gonna do about it? And that goes for everything in this life. You know, okay, you made it to this point. You you've listened to this song. You know, you've watched this anime. You've eaten that food. You know, like, what are you gonna do about it now? Are you gonna do? Are you gonna sit on it and do nothing? Or are you gonna do something about it? You know, even with this whole freaking Ukraine Russia conflict going on. Okay, yeah. So what doesn't matter what side you're picking. Okay, so you just you decide you want to cry about it. You decide you want to freaking talk about it. You want to freaking do what what whatever whatever. You want to get yourself involved. Okay, you know. Okay, so you you you're presented with the situation. How, how what are you gonna do about it? How are you gonna respond? You know, and you know I'm not going I'm not going any further into that. You know, but anyways, yeah, like you know, what are you gonna do about it? That's the big question. And I know as for me. You know, with uh, with the choices that I make, choices have made, and choices I will make. All in all, I'm gonna perceive that everything happens for a reason, even if it doesn't seem ideal, and that I, no matter what choices I make, I'm going to learn from them. I'm gonna learn something from them. I'm gonna make a point to learn something from them, and that I'm never gonna stop observing, and that I'm gonna continuously make sure that I grow and develop in any kind of way possible. I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna let an experience slip by. I'm not gonna let an experience, you know, be all for nothing. You know, that's just the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter. So, anyways, yeah, that was kind of heavy, but yeah, <laughs> I was actually was not expecting this podcast to be one hour long. It was supposed to be a forty minute long thing, but then I started going on one tangent and then another, and then I finally got to the main topic, but then like that kind of just turned into its own thing. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, that's the third time I burped. But anyways, okay. So, uh, so yeah, so, if you made it this far, thank you for listening, thank you for watching, thank you for doing whatever, I don't care how you're listening to this, whether it be on Spotify or on the other many different platforms I'm on, or on YouTube, either way, thank you for your time, thank you for just listening, thank you, uh, for supporting me, if you want... Let's see. So if you so if you like this podcast, don't forget to freaking uh, don't forget to follow if you're yeah don't forget to like and follow if you're on uh, if you're on Spotify. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. You know again it's it's uh, three a.m. thoughts on Spotify. It's Xflix dash three a.m. thoughts on YouTube. Yeah. So don't forget to click that bell. Don't forget to freaking hit that subscribe. Hit follow. Do whatever. You know. Don't forget to do any of that if you want to continue hearing this content. I'm actually gonna get back into making content regularly again. Instead of making it like once a month or whatever, because man, I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about, and I want to bring back a lot of the character cast, because Mr. Bill's story is still not done. We still got some more characters to introduce, and I still got a whole plan of freaking different series and stuff I want to do. So yeah, I can't wait to get into that. But uh, anyways, yeah. So this is your boy Austin Yago. I have three AM thoughts. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have you a blessed one? show you own uh, 3 a.m. thoughts, you know, you, you know, yeah, yeah that's, that's my brother's show, yeah, what about it? Well, look, I want to, I want to, I want to have my own show, too, uh, do, do you have any room on your, uh, station for, for me to have my own show? Well, yeah, go ahead, I'll see why not, uh, just, just uh, uh, just don't forget to pay the fee. Uh, what, 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 what fee? Uh, um, uh, well, uh, you gotta feed me, uh, you, you gotta feed me specifically Burger King uh, every single day, and then, uh, you also, you gotta get a homie clue my butt. Uh, wait, what?
Okay, the Burger King, all I can kind of do. You know, at least you're not asking for money. Because I can always steal some Burger King. But the thing is, why are you asking me to clean your butt? That sounds a little absurd. Well, look, as you can see, um, my name is Pumba, and there's only one person in the world named Pumba. You know, I'm a pig. You know, I can't really, I can't move my arms to to wipe, to wipe, to wipe my my butt cheeks. And uh, well, I have my my uh, my pastor. He doesn't really do that stuff anymore. And uh, wow, well, wait, I I don't even want to know this story. Look, I just want to show. I will do whatever it takes to get on your 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 station. I, I just really need a show right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, just, uh, just, just come by. Not on the next podcast, but the podcast after that. And, uh, you can talk about whatever you want. Okay, that sounds sweet. All right. Can't wait to talk about how much I hate Neon Firecracker and all the schemes he, he puts on in my school and all the freaking stress he brings about in my head. Okay. I don't know who this Neon Firecracker guy is, but, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. It's been nice talking to you. Thank you. Uh, well, wait, wait, wait a second. Uh, one more question. Yeah! Uh, when, wh- where, where's your studio located? Uh, wh- when do I come in? Oh, uh, I'll call you back! Oh, uh, bye! Well, no, wait, 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 stop!